The Lord's Judgment in Response to the Fall of Man Jesus Christ Reveals Through Jacob Lorber The Household of God History of the Primal Creation of Spirits and Matter The First Patriarch from Adam to Abraham Volume 1, Chapter 9 Thus spoke the Lord to me, Jacob Lorber, and within me for everyone, and that is true, faithful, and certain. And behold, eternal love, through the might and power of its mercy, withdrew the hand of might and the hand of power from its eyes of all enlightening grace, and the light of grace penetrated the cave where Adam was weeping, and behind the thorn bush where Eve was grieving. Adam's tears were preserved in the bosom of the earth, and were and are called thumim, or stones, from within which the light of the seven spirits of God emblematically emanates. They became solid through the light of grace out of the warmth of love, akin to his honest repentance, as a permanent monument to the enlightening wisdom. They were scattered across the entire earth as comforting signs for the future rebirth, which is to be, like the tears of Adam, capable of receiving and beautifully echoing the great light from the mercy of eternal love's sea of grace, and they shall resist any and all temptations of the world. The tears of the grieving Eve behind the thorn bush were preserved within the earth, and were colored like her justified blush of shame, a consequence of misusing the hallowed love of Adam within her. Eternal love saw that each of these tears of Eve was righteous before Adam, the son of merciful love, and the warmth of eternal love hardened these tears into little stones, and their name was Urim, as a symbolic sign of Eve's righteous sorrow. And lo, a tear dropped onto the thorn bush that sheltered her, and this was a tear of lost innocence. It colored the otherwise white flower of the bush, and they became red, as a sign of the lost innocence of Eve. And though by now the people already know all the plants on this earth, they are not aware of their true meaning in spirit and in truth. And they will not know and understand this until they have attained their rebirth, the mercy of eternal love through the grace of salvation within themselves. And now behold another secret, which has yet to be understood due to the wicked arrogance of the children of the world. Lo. Two flowers of the bush were fructified by Eve's justly innocent tear, and they faithfully preserved this blessing of eternal love through the storms of all ages, during the great wars of Jehovah with the nations of the earth, and made fertile the wife of Abraham at the time of the release of grace from above, foreshadowing the great work of merciful love, and made fertile the wife of Zechariah towards the true completion of the greatest of all acts of the eternal God's merciful love. Now, return your gaze to Adam and Eve, visit them with me, and see how I, eternal love, found them naked, forlorn, weeping and grieving, in just repentance and shame. I called Adam out of the cave and drew forth Eve from behind the thorn bush. And behold, they did not dare look at their father's countenance, for they were frightened by a great thunder of the deadly judgment emerging from the depths of the divinity's wrath. 
The wrathful flames of God the Endless furiously heaved across all the endless spaces, all the way down to Earth, where the great love was now abiding with its repentant and grieving fallen children, created by its merciful grace. And behold, there was a fierce struggle between merciful love again showing compassion for the repentant and grieving created beings, and the wroth divinity, wishing to destroy everything for the atonement of its incorruptible holiness. Behold, the flames of wrath of the divinity crashed down to earth faster than flashes of lightning penetrating its center and igniting it in all directions. The consuming flames shot up to the moon, to the sun, and even enveloped the stars. And lo, the whole of endless infinity became a sea of fire, and terrible thunder rolled through all the endless spaces. The earth groaned, the sea roared, the moon wept, the sun lamented. And all the stars cried louder than all the thunder in their great fear of eternal destruction. And their tremendous voices resounded from the endless depths of the wrath of the divinity, exclaiming, Great and sublime God, soothe your great wrath and extinguish the destructive flames of your most righteous anger. And in your holiness spare the innocent. For the fire of your wrath will destroy the righteous and the very eternal love within you. It will take you yourself captive in the immense might and power of your holiness. See and hear with open eyes and ears what the wrathful divinity spoke. However, none understood the words except for eternal love which, during the outbreak of the wrath of the divinity, protected the repentant, newly created couple upon the groaning earth. Thanks to the great might and power of love's grace, the furious flame of wrath was prevented from seizing Adam's place of repentance and Eve's place of grief. Now, hear and understand well the dreadful words of anger from the depths of the wrath of the divinity. What good is to me the groaning and raving of the earth, the weeping of the moons, the lamenting of the suns, and the wailing of the stars? For I am alone, forsaken by my love, which has become faithless to me and gone down to the earth to the twofold evil scum. What shall I do without it? Therefore, I shall destroy all its works in their very foundation and annihilate everything, leaving nothing that, in all the future eternities of eternities, might draw my love away from me. I shall remain the only God forevermore, as I was from the eternity of eternities. And you, rotten structure created by my love, which became weak, tumble down into nothingness, so that I may rediscover my love and strengthen it once more through the might and power of my eternal holiness. Amen. And behold, thereupon the bonds of the creations in all the spaces of God's infinity loosed, and with a great thunder, with roaring, howling, raging and rushing, the ruins tumbled through the vast spaces towards the depth of depths of their destruction. And this was the very earth itself, lying in ruins as well within the wide bosom of merciful love. The newly created trembled in fear at the terrible sight of this vast, horrifying scene of destruction, the magnitude of which no created spirit will ever be capable of conceiving in all its fullness, for it was boundless. And now, behold and hear further what merciful love then spoke and did. Perceive the words of love in its might, and behold the great acts of mercy in their power, 
and hear and understand well the words spoken. Great, almighty God, in all your might, power, and holiness, withdraw your great wrath and extinguish the fire of your all-destroying anger, and hear in the stillness of your holiness the words of your eternal love, the only life within you. It is eternal as you are, and mighty and powerful as you, out of it and it out of you. Do not destroy the life within it and yourself through it, but show mercy and allow love to give you satisfaction and demand atonement for your injured and offended holiness. No sacrifice shall be too great for your love, for the eternal atonement of your holiness. And now, behold, hear and understand well what happened thereupon and what the divinity answered. The fire was subdued, and from all the spaces blew a gentler breeze still mixed with the roaring thunder of the flying debris from the dissolved worlds, which, still burning, flickered like immense flashes of lightning from one boundlessness to the other. And love understood the thunder of God, who spoke with vehemence. I will place all the guilt upon you, like the debris of the worlds are cast upon the earth, you shall extirpate the offense rendered to my holiness, which is the perpetual bond between me and you. Behold, I curse the earth, so that no stain may defile my holiness, and I might become an unholy god like you. And this curse shall be with your guilt, which you have to bear and extirpate for the sake of my holiness, washing the earth with your blood from the curse of the disgrace through Adam's sin. And behold, hear and understand well what love replied with, speaking as follows. O great and most holy God of all might and power, it shall be done according to your will. And lo, the fire suddenly died down on earth and in all the spaces of creation. The ruins of the destroyed suns Earths and moons were reassembled through the might and power of love that had been granted its wish by the divinity. And they arranged themselves once more in the order in which they had been from the beginning of their existence. Yet they retained, as eternal evidence, the indelible traces of their former utter destruction, like the stigmata of eternal love, which later, in the great time of times, bled upon the cross for all creation. Here and there, debris from other worlds remained lying on the surface, in the depths and in the seas of the earth, as a sign of God's might and power, and at the same time as eloquent witnesses of the immensely great acts of merciful love. And behold, hear and understand well what happened then. When eternal love accepted the demands, and thereby gave in advance satisfaction to the great holiness of God, the divinity, with gentler rustling and blowing, understood by love alone, made known its will and spoke softly. Behold. Your great mercy has arisen within me and come before my all-seeing eyes. And in the stillness of my holiness have I recognized your great sincerity and eternal faithfulness. I have counted Adam's tears of repentance and Eve's tears of grief and have become filled with compassion through your great mercy. And behold, I shall now withdraw my judgment, and, as requested by you, let an abundance of mercy pour forth and repair the damage my judgments have caused. No one, except I alone, can do so, for no one is good but I, the Holy Father, and this shall be my name forever. And you, my love, are my son, 
and the holiness and the mighty bond of power between us and all that has gone forth from us is the Holy Spirit and shall fill all the spaces of infinity forever and ever. Amen. This says the good and holy Father. Amen. And now, my beloved son, tell the penitent and grieving couple as well, engraving it deeply into their hearts, that they shall faithfully keep the commandments of love and mercy to the end of their days. And at a time I have decreed, I will send them a mediator between me and them, to redeem the great guilt and lighten the heavy burden of their disobedience. Until then, they shall abide in all patience and meekness, and the bread I will give them sparingly, they shall eat gratefully by the sweat of their brow. And they shall never have enough, until the time of the Mediator, whom I will awaken from among their midst, and who will be perfect and good, as we are perfect and good and holy forever. Tell them also that I have withdrawn my judgments only for those who will conscientiously keep my strict commandments. The trespassers are, at the slightest transgression, threatened with them forever, in all the severity of the forever holy truth. This speaks the holy and only good Father through his Son, who is the eternal love within him, and through the Holy Spirit, as the active grace out of us both, for the future forgiveness of sin, which shall now make their bodies troublesome, killing them thereafter temporally, for the attainment of life after the death of the body, following the time of the promised mediator. This says the solely holy and good Father. Amen. Amen. Amen.